Shanmuga Permal is a faculty member in the Department of Information Science and Technology, College of Engineering, Anna University, Chennai. He has more than six years of PG and UG teaching experience. He teaches multimedia communication and networks, mobile and pervasive computing, computer communications and networks, computer networks, computer architecture, mobile computing, mobile networks, ad hoc and sensor networks, communication techniques, grid computing, programming and data structures, problem solving and C programming. He is a member in several board of exams that include IT Board of College of Engineering Anna University Chennai and Board Examiner in CSC, Computer and Communication, MCA of National Engineering College, Tamil Nadu. He has delivered guest lectures in various engineering colleges of Tamil Nadu including National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research. He has also attended faculty development programs, seminars, conferences and workshops. He has many publications in international journals and international conferences. He has filed a patent in India and published his novel idea in the Indian Patent Journal. His research area includes wireless sensor networks, mobile communication, location-based services and electricity power generation. Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. This lecture series is going to cover mobile and pervasive computing. The lecture series cover cellular wireless networks, global system for mobile communication, GSM architecture, GSM protocols, connection establishment, frequency allocation in GSM network, GSM handover, security in GSM and the general packet radio service that is GPRS. In today's lecture, we are going to cover two aspects, mobile services offered by the GSM and the GSM system architecture. Three mobile services are actually offered by the GSM network that includes bearer services, tele-services and supplementary services. The bearer services explains how the users are sending and receiving their information through the basic three layers or layer three of OSA network. Tele-services includes the voice communication aspects of GSM how the users are transmitting their information through the voice channels. Third one is supplementary services. In the previous lectures, we have discussed about the first two mobile services. Today, we are going to discuss more on the third service that is our supplementary service. Also, we are going to cover the GSM system architecture. The system architecture of the GSM is actually divided into three parts. They includes radio subsystem that is RSS, network and switching subsystem that is known as NSS and the third subsystem of the GSM system architecture is operation subsystem that is known as OSS. Any basic GSM architecture contains the three architectures, the subsystem architectures. What is the supplementary services? The supplementary services is nothing but how the uh, GSM offers the extra facilities to their users. So, the supplementary services are specific to the individual GSM providers. One GSM provider may provide some extra services. The same services may not given to all the other users of other GSM providers. So, we can tell that the GSM uh, supplementary services is independent for individual GSM service providers. The supplementary service includes user identification, call forwarding facilities, forwarding of the calls. The supplementary services offered by the GSM supports closed user groups. So, users, those who want to be in a single group, they can avail this service from the GSM network. So, they can get some tariff which is supported by the GSM network so that they can be connected through the group. Also, the GSM offers subnet that is GSM sub network which is offered and used by several companies. 
So, the employees of the same company can be connected to a GSM sub network. So, this is an extra facility provided by the GSM network. Now, let us discuss about the GSM architecture. The GSM architecture is a very complex architecture, it contains many subparts, but a fact about the GSM architecture is a GSM user only hours of a few parts of the entire GSM architecture. For example, a user may see only the mobile station that is the mobile phone used by the GSM users and the antenna masses of base transfer system or the tower generally it is referred as the GSM tower. These two parts are only known to the common man of the GSM users, but actually the GSM architecture has its own architecture that is very complex in the perspective of the technical view. GSM interfaces are classified into four types. What is an interface actually? That is the point or that is a specification that specifies how the systems are going to work. For example, UM interface. That UM interface is the one which actually connects the GSM user with the tower. The tower is referred in the technical specification as base transceiver system or BTS. So, this UM specifies how an US user GSM user is connected to the tower and A interface that A interface will connect RSS and NSS. We are going to see how the interfaces are used and what is an RSS and NSS in the subsequent lectures. Similarly, the A bits interface that connects the tower with the base station controller. O interface is a very important interface that connects the NSS with the OSS. Let us start our discussion from the radio subsystem that is the first and very important architecture of this GSM network. The RSS comprises of mobile station that is a mobile phone used by the GSM users and the base transceiver system that is the actual tower what we are seeing in the network and the third one is base station subsystem that is the BSS and the last one is base station controller that is BSC. We will discuss the individual subsystems in deep. This is the overall functional architecture of a GSM network. As I already mentioned, the GSM architecture is divided into three parts. This is the first part that is radio subsystem and the second part is network and switching subsystem and the third one is operation subsystem. So, various parts, the sub parts are belonging to the individual subsystems of the entire GSM architecture. Today, we will cover what is an RSS or radio subsystem. So, the radio subsystem contains the BSS, BSE, BTS, mobile station and the UM interface. Actually, the dashed elliptical specifies the BSS. So, BSS is nothing but the collection of various BTS. You can see the hexagonal shape in the network. Actually, the hexagonal shape is nothing but the area covered by the individual tower. But a fact about range of the tower cannot be a perfect hexagonal shape or it cannot be a perfect circle also. This is for the representation purpose. But because of the nature of the signal propagation, the range or the cell covered by the individual cell phone tower is not a perfect circle. We will see what are all the various influencing factors that affects the shape of the radio range. Now, the mobile station is nothing but the mobile phone which is used by the GSM users and as I already mentioned you can see the UM that is UM interface that specification gives how to connect the mobile station with the BTS because we should understand one thing that the BTS uses several frequency bands. The frequency reuses increases the scalability of the entire GSM network. Now, how the users are connected? At the same time, many users can be connected to the single base station. So, the channel allocation mechanisms are clearly mentioned by the UM interface. So, from the diagram, we can understand that many mobile stations can be connected to a single BTS that is the cell phone tower using the UM interfaces. So, many BTS are combined and it is referred as the base station subsystem. So, the collection of BTS 
are referred as BSS. So, many BTS or the cell phone towers are connected and controlled by the single BSC. Now, we will look at the individual subsystems in detail. Now, the A bits is an another one interface that interface connects the BTS with the BSC and O interface is nothing but the specification that specifies how the entire GSM architecture is connected to the outside network that we will discuss in later lectures. The mobile station contains many subsystems. The user it is an actually it is an user equipment that individual mobile station has its own uh, hardware and software systems and the very important and the famous word that we have heard is SIM card. So, the SIM card is actually a part of the mobile station. The SIM card stores all the user specific information and one fact about the SIM card is the SIM card is the specific to the network. It is not specific to the user equipment. So, different service providers may offer different SIM cards and facilities to their users. The another important part of the SIM card is IMEI that is International Mobile Equipment Identity. We have heard this term several times actually this IMEI number is used in many applications. For example, if our mobile is being theft the using this IMEI number only we can trace the mobile phone. So, it is an unique number to the individual mobile systems. The theft policies are clearly using the IMEI number. And one more fact is charging and authentication purposes are not specific to the mobile kit. It is actually specific to the individual SIM card. So, different mobile stations are charged using their own tariffs depends on the uh, tariff plans specified by the GSM service providers. The GSM users can make the emergency calls even without the SIM card that we have already learned in the teleservices of mobile services offered by the GSM. Even without the SIM card, the mobile users can make a call. So, as we already discussed, these emergency calls uh, got a very high priority. So, they can preempt other calls. For example, the already established user channels can be preempted for this purpose. The other very important parts of uh, SIM cards are serial number and list of subscribed services personal identity number and pin unblocking key that is referred as PUC code and authentication key for security purpose and locking mechanisms and international mobile subscriber identity. The pin number is used to uh, unlock the MS for various security purpose we may lock our mobile kit. So, that can be locked and unlocked using the pin number. Unfortunately, if you uh, use the pin numbers wrongly for more than 3 times, the mobile station will be locked that is our mobile phone will be locked. Then we have to contact the service provider and they will provide the PUC code. So, that PUC code is used to uh, release the lock that is wrongly applied by the users. These pin number and PUC codes are used for uh, implementing the security purpose. So, as we already uh, seen the chiper text that is the key which is used for encryption purpose. For example, uh, the GSM user may send some very secret information that secret information should be encrypted. The hackers will not be able to retrieve the information. So, chiper text and temporary mobile subscriber identity number and location area identification number are the parts of the mobile systems. At this point, we can stop our discussion and we will have a short break. Welcome back. Before the break, we have discussed about the mandatory services which is uh, available in the SIM card. Now, let us see some supplementary services which is available with the mobile station. A mobile station offers the interfaces to the users like display, loudspeaker, microphone. These kind of facilities are not a mandatory service, but the smart and modern phones are providing these kind of services to attract their users. The mobile stations also can be connected with the computers and modems and infrared devices and through the Bluetooth also it can be connected with various devices. So far we have discussed about the mobile station of the entire GSM architecture. Let us start our discussion now with the base transceiver station. 
actually the base transceiver system is nothing but the cell phone tower which is used in the global system mobile communication architecture. Obviously, the user the common user may know about the antenna array masters and all. So, the antenna arrays are built on the BTS. So, the BTS comprises radio equipment with antenna sets, signal processing units to process the signals which is sent and received by the users and the amplifiers for radio transmission. Generally, amplifiers are used to amplify the signal because the signal may be very weak because of various conditions like fading, multipath propagation. So, in these situations, the amplifier circuits should be used to boost up the signals. So, these kind of amplifiers are used in the BTS. The BTS is the very important part as it creates a radio cell or the coverage area. What about the coverage area and the shape of the radio cell? That is a very big question. The UM as we already discussed connects the mobile stations with the individual base transceiver systems that is with the actual towers. Now, the A bits are connecting the BTS with the BSC. Two interfaces are dealt with the BTS. So, one is UM interface that connects the mobile station with the BTS and the next interface that is the A bit interface connects the BTS with the BSE that is basic subsystem controller. The UM interface specifies how the mobile station is connected with the BTS. It clearly specifies about the media access protocol. That is, we should understand one fact that the GSM uh, network cannot offer the individual frequency channels or a dedicated frequency channels for all the GSM users because the frequency is a scarce resource. It should be reused properly. So, the TDMA, FDMA that is the time division multiplexes and frequency division multiplexes or the channel access mechanisms are clearly specified in the UM interface. Now, the A bit interface consists of 16, 64 kilobits of connections. So, individual channels has a capability of transferring the information. A GSM cell can cover the range from some 100 meters to 35 kilometer. But the exact range is clearly influenced by the environment factors like uh, some interferences, some uh, uh, noise characteristics, other external signals, some buildings. So, these kind of uh, signal propagation factors highly influences the shape and range of the GSM radio cell. Next, uh, we can start and discuss about base station subsystem that is the BSS. The GSM network comprises many BSS, a collection of various BTSs is referred as BSS. A single base station subsystem can cover and connect many BTSs. So, each BSS is controlled by the BSC. The user should understand the hierarchical level of these kinds. So, mobile station is connected with the BTS, BTS is controlled by the BSC. Many BTSs are combinedly known as BSS, depends on the coverage reach. So, BSS performs all the functions necessary for maintaining the radio connections. When should a connection established? When should page a mobile phone? When should search a user? So, these kind of operations are clearly controlled by the BSS. Coding, decoding of voice, data, all the things are clearly specified by the BSS. The next we are going to see the base station controller that is the BSE. The BSE is a very important or we can say that it is a heart of the GSM network because it manages or controls many BTSs. So, the channel should be reserved for the GSM users for making a call. So, both the uplink and the downlink frequencies should be allocated for the individual mobile users so that the mobile users make a call, they can receive the call and all. So, the BSE is the person or controller who reserves the radio frequencies for the channels for both uplink and downlink frequencies. It handles the handover with the BSS. So, handover is a very interesting and very important aspect in the GSM network. We will cover in detail in the uh, subsequent lectures, but for now the handover is nothing but the users are added with the mobility facility. Even the call is in progress, they are able to move from one tower to another tower. So, the users of the GSM network should not feel this mobility, the service should not be disturbed. So, handover is handled by the BSE. 
So, if a user is making a call and you just assume before uh, completing the call the user is in move, movement. So, the call should not be disconnected. So, now the BSE is the controller which is handing over all the connections to the next nearby and possible tower. So, this is the handover operation that we will look in detail in the next lectures. The BSE performs the paging of the MS. Paging is nothing but searching the mobile systems. For example, if you are making a call to your friend, your friend's mobile phone should be paged, it should be searched, it should be located. So, actually the paging operation is exactly done by the BSC. Also, the BSC multiplexes many radio channels into the fixer. We should understand one thing that we are connecting or the GSM connecting its mobile users to the existing network also. So, that mobile users frequency channels should be multiplexed and it should be multiplexed with the existing network. So, already we have discussed about the interoperability of the GSM. GSM provides good interoperability. It clearly interoperate with the existing networks that is the major reason for the great success of GSM network. So far we have discussed about the GSM architecture and the mobile services offered by the GSM network. So far we have discussed about the base station controller. It allocates the radio frequencies for uplink and downlink channels. It manages several cell phone towers. It manages and controls the handover operations. So, through the handover operation, uh, the BSE is helping. It uh, provides a mobility support for the users. BSE provides the paging facility for the cell phone tower. It multiplexes many radio channels into the fixed network. So, here we can note it down that the A interface is used to multiplex many radio channels, the wireless channels into the fixed network channels. The fixed network channels are nothing but the available network, the well established network like public switched telephone network that is PSTN or ISDN networks. To understand the facts behind the GSM network, we should understand the basics about the radio signals. So, what is a radio signal? The radio signal is nothing but the channel which helps to connect the mobile station to the cell phone tower. Here we are not using the fixed wires. So, we are providing the mobility facility to the users through the radio frequency channels. In the frequency band spectrum, we have many waves with the various kind of frequencies and wavelengths. Now, the GSM has to choose the right wave with the correct frequency and apt wavelength to provide a better facility. For example, if we use the infrared, we need the LOS. But if you use the radio frequencies as the channels, so it has many advantages over the infrared. So, like that the individual GSM service providers has to choose the right frequencies, right wavelengths, so that they can provide the better mobility to the users. As I already mentioned the shape of any radio cell cannot be a perfect hexagonal or a perfect circle. By default, the radio signals are propagated through the space. So, it has to face many and many of environmental disturbances like a high voltage line passing near through the cell phone tower can affect the radio range and very high building can create some problems and a very big trees can disturb the signals. So, the signals which is generated from the mobile station will not travel in a single path. It will be split into many paths and that path is known as multi path. So, a signal of a same data or a same call may pass or may travel through the individual paths that effect is referred as multi path propagation. So, these kind of effects should be handled properly by the GSM network providers. So, UM interface clearly helps how to solve these kind of problems in one perspective. And one more important aspect is about MAC layer that is a medium access control or media access control. As I already mentioned the individual dedicated channels cannot be uh, opted to the individual users as we are providing the dedicated uh, uh, cables for the PSTN networks. Uh, in case of BSN and all then for landline users we they will give the dedicated cables, but in case of GSM network that is not at all possible. 
so the frequency should be reused so the mac is a layer which is actually specified in the osi interfaces the open system interconnection as well as in the tcp ip protocol stack also so this is the layer 2 protocol this layer 2 protocol clearly specifies this is not only for the gsm architecture this is common for all the wireless technologies so how a medium should be shared because the mobile system has to handle many users many users may be connected at the same time so how to handle many users so the mac layer clearly specifies the medium access control protocols now sdma fdma tdma cdma these four technologies are mechanisms are used to define how to share a medium now let us discuss the sdma space division multiple access in the cell phone tower we used to see that we have a sectorized antennas now that sectorized antennas are used to split up the area for example antenna 1 will cover a particular angle and direction antenna 2 will cover a particular angle so that we are specifically separating the spaces so like that the space is separated and frequency spectrum is divided and it is allocated to the individual and time division now the frequencies can be divided and it can be mixed with the time divisions and the tdma fdma can be combinedly used and the last one is cdma cdma core division multiple access it provides good security let us summarize our discussions supplementary services may offer different kind of services for gsm users they are specific to the individual gsm networks various kind of interfaces like um a bits a or are used by the gsm and mobile station contains a sim card and user specific devices sim card contains the ima number used for managing theft problems and charging the user is not specific to the mobile station it is specific to the individual mobile service providers a single bsc can control several base stations and gsm ranges varies from 100 meter to 35 kilometer gsm range and shape are highly influenced by the environmental conditions and locations of the mobile stations can be easily identified in a cell range let us put some questions for our understanding can we integrate a mobile station into a car for tracking applications is charging the user depends on our individual mobile station what are the main tasks of um interface what is the real shape of the bts radio range or a cell phone radio range what is the paging of mobile station with this we can conclude today's lectures in the next lectures we will discuss about the remaining architectures of the gsm network that includes network and switching subsystem and operation subsystems thank you